Good afternoon. Welcome to the Monetary Policy Stance and Monetary Policy Report Press Briefing. Let us welcome the following DSP Resource Speakers, Monetary Board Chairman and Banca Central ng Pilipinas Governor Felipe M. Medalia, Deputy Governor Francisco G. Daquila Jr. of the Monetary and Economic Sector, Senior Assistant Governor Illuminada T. Sikat of the Monetary Policy Subsector, and Officer in Charge Dennis D. Lapid of the Department of Economic Research. Governor Medalia will now deliver the statement on the monetary policy decision. At this meeting on monetary policy today, the Monetary Board decided to keep the interest rate on the VSP's overnight reverse report repurchase facility at 6.25%. Accordingly, the interest rates on the overnight deposit and lending facilities were all kept at 5.75% and 6.75% respectively. Based on the sum of new information and its assessment of the impact of previous monetary policy actions, the Monetary Board decided that a pause in monetary policy tightening was appropriate. The BSP's latest baseline projections continue to reflect a gradual return of inflation to the target band of 2 to 4 percent over the policy horizon. Average inflation for 2023 is now projected to settle at 5.5 percent, lower than 6 percent previously, while average inflation forecast for 2024 fell slightly to 2.8 percent. Meanwhile, inflation expectations for 2024 and 2025 are steady and within range, within the target range. The Monetary Board also noted that while GDP growth has remained robust in the first quarter of 2023, demand indicators have also pointed to a moder potential moderation in recent months, suggesting that previous policy rate increases by the BSP continue to work their way through the economy. Moreover, the Monetary Board is encouraged by the recent mounting of whole of government actions to ease constraints on food supply. Nevertheless, even as headline inflation has continued to decelerate with slow increases in the price of food and energy-related items, core inflation has only eased marginally. In addition, the balance of risk to inflation outlook remains largely tilted towards the upside, owing to persistent constraints in the supply of key food items, the potential impact of El Nino on food prices and utility rates, as well as the effects of possible additional adjustments in transportation fares and uh, wages. Meanwhile, the impact of a weaker than expected global economic recovery continues to be the primary downside to the outlook. Given these considerations, the Monetary Board deems it prudent for the BSP to take a pause in monetary policy tightening while remaining ready to respond to emerging threats to inflation. The Monetary Board also deems it necessary to keep the policy rate at its current level over the near term as ongoing price pressures continue to warrant a close monitor monitoring. A prudent pause also allows monetary authorities to further assess how macroeconomic and financial conditions will evolve in view of tighter global financial conditions. Moving forward, the BSP will continue to monitor developments affecting the outlook for inflation and growth. The BSP stands ready to resume monetary tightening as necessitated by emerging data, consistent with its primary mandate to promote price and financial stability. Thank you, Governor. At this point, we would like to request OIC Lapid to share with us the May 2023 Monetary Policy Report. Good afternoon. Uh, we, we present the a summary of the key considerations that went into the, the monetary board's latest monetary policy decision. Uh, the short presentation that uh, you'll see uh, will have a more detailed discussion in the monetary policy report 
uh, which will be published uh, tomorrow. Firstly, uh, in the first slide, the, so these are so these are the key considerations. Firstly, the forecasts have been uh, revised downwards. The latest uh, forecast for 2023 is now 5.5 percent uh, average inflation for this year. Uh, uh, this is down from 6.1 percent uh, back in the February monetary policy report. For 2024, the latest forecast is 2.8 percent. Um, and also lower uh, from 3.1% in the February monetary policy report. Uh, we, we wish to note that the, the, these, uh, this represents a um, major update in the BSD's forecast because we're incorporating the uh, first quarter GDP data as well as uh, the, the latest CPI uh, data release. The downward revision for 2023 is mainly due to the following factors, a lower than expected actual inflation for March and April, a slower, a slower uh, domestic and global growth outlook, and also the impact of the additional uh, 25 basis point increase uh, back in March uh, by the BSP. For 2024, the, a lower uh, crude oil prices and also the appreciation of the peso contributed to the lower forecast. Uh, but this was uh, partly upset by positive base effects in the early part of the year. The inflation path will remain elevated in the near term as key food commodities continue to face supply constraints on the domestic front, uh, which could be exacerbated by the impact of El Nino weather conditions on prices of agricultural commodities. And at the same time, global oil prices have decelerated um, in the midst of weaker uh, global demand. And similarly, non-oil prices, uh, particularly food and fertilizer uh, are on a downward trend. In the absence of uh, further supply shocks, uh, we'll show this in the next slide, inflation could return or is, is projected to return to the two to 4% target by the fourth quarter of this year. On a quarterly basis, in, uh, or in, in terms of the path, inflation is expected to average at 7.2% in the first half of this year. And this will be further decelerating to 4.6% by the third quarter, and then down to 3% by fourth quarter of this year. You'll find these numbers in the monetary policy report. Uh, 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 published tomorrow. Uh, meanwhile, inflation is projected to decelerate close to the low end of the 2 to 4% target uh, by the first quarter of next year, due mainly to the uh, effect of uh, negative uh, base effects, as well as the likely decline or the expected decline in oil and non oil prices. Uh, next, we show the inflation path or the late, as shown as depicted in the latest fan chart. So the projected path shows that inflation is likely to remain above 4% until, until September, which will make it about 18 months or 18 consecutive months that inflation was uh, above the target. Meanwhile, um, uh, the, the path also, uh, uh, the latest baseline path also uh, includes a projection for May 2023 of uh, of about 6.4% or a, or a month on month change of 0.2%. And this is um, again, primarily driven by uh, negative base effects along with the, the continued decline in prices of key food items such as vegetables and fish. Uh, lower um, LPG and gasoline prices are also expected to contribute uh, to the moderation in inflation uh, for the month. In terms of the overall outlook uh, for this year and next year, the, the uh, latest assessment is that the upside, or, uh, the, the balance of risk to the inflation outlook are still mainly weighted to the upside. Um, for the upside risk, these include things like the, import, the impact of transport fare increases, higher domestic prices for key food items that are still facing supply constraints, and also higher than expected wage adjustments. Um, meanwhile, for the downside risk, uh, as we also noted in the previous MPR, the, the main downside risk is still the, the 
potential for weaker than expected global e economic uh, recovery. So as you can see, as you'll see in the chart that the blue bands around the central uh, central dark line, uh, which is the, the baseline projection are tend to be thicker above the central line uh, compared to below. So that's meant to uh, indicate or, or depict that the risks, we're seeing the risk are as being mostly concentrated and upside. So the likelihood is that inflation work will turn out to be higher uh, compared to the baseline. And that's, you can see that also in the probability distribution uh, on the right hand chart that's uh, that accompanies the, the, this fan chart. So for 2023, the probability is weighted towards inflation being above the target. Uh, for the May NPR, the probability assigned is 93%. For 2024, the, uh, the probability is mostly weighted uh, to inflation being within 2 to 4%. Um, but and, um, between being below or above target, there's a slightly higher um, a probability or, uh, assigned to uh, about four percent. So that means that the risks are still expected to be on the upside. Next, uh, the monetary board also considered uh, what's happening to inflation expectations. So this is based on our survey of, of, of private sector economists. So we surveyed twenty six uh, economists in the private sector who who gave us their uh, latest forecast for for twenty twenty three until twenty twenty five. The mean forecast for the, the latest survey is 5.8%. And this is lower from the April uh, survey that we did uh, uh, where the mean forecast was 6%. Meanwhile, for 2024 and 2025, the average forecast uh, based on the responses were largely uh, unchanged. The, um, the economists uh, that we surveyed expect inflation to settle above the upper end of the government's uh, target range for this year, mainly because of the effect of supply shocks. The, they see the risk uh, to the inflation uh, forecast as being tilted to, to the upside uh, due, to the, uh, due to elevated prices of goods and services uh, brought about by supply chain disruptions. Uh, so briefly to summarize, the monetary board decided to uh, to pause at this time, given the following consideration. Uh, the emerging outlook for, in, for inflation supports a prudent pause in ongoing monetary tightening by the BSP. Our latest baseline forecasts have been adjusted downwards uh, with uh, the 2024 forecast uh, uh, still within the target. Inflation expectations have also declined towards the, the, the range uh, target range for 2024 and 2025. Uh, since the last uh, monetary policy report. And both are also now within the target range over the medium term. Previous policy rate increases appear to be working uh, their way through the economy as uh, evinced by demand, uh, uh, demand indicators. And this has helped to temper the further buildup of demand induced price pressures. Never, nevertheless, the, the assessment uh, is that the upside risk continued to dominate for 2023 and 2024. And this warrants continued readiness by the BSP to resume monetary action uh, if necessary. Um, briefly, we would like to note that the monet, so apart from these uh, different, cons the details of these different considerations in the monetary policy report, you also find uh, three box articles. The first is uh, the first is about monetary policy developments that happened, uh, particularly during the March monetary policy meeting. The second, uh, which you'll find on page 15, is an evaluation of the BSP's forecasting performance in 2022, where we show that the BSP enjoys a, a very slight advantage over the private sector in terms of forecasting inflation. And third, we, uh, a third box article presents our uh, estimates of total factor productivity um, and, and, and its determinants. And uh, here we, our estimates suggest that uh, productivity fell as expected during the pandemic, but has since recovered. Um, and that, although it, uh, it still remains below their the pre-pandemic level. This ends the presentation and the panel looks forward to your questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, OYC.
OIC Lapid. Let us now proceed to questions from the press and market analysts. This will be the order of questions. So first, in-person attendees from the VSP Press Corps. Second, questions sent ahead of time from both analysts and reporters. And third, any additional questions that we may have. So is there any question from the floor right now? Please state your name and your organization before asking your question. Thank you. Hi, hi Gov. Um, Manny from Bloomberg. Uh, I just want to ask, sir, um, so you paused after um, uh, about a year of, of hiking rates. Uh, is the next step uh, cutting uh, banks triple R? And do we see that as early as next month? Thank you. OK. Uh, as you know, we have always been planning to do that. And the, one of the reasons is that our reserve requirements are still quite high. The other is that the fact that we have given a relief that loans to small and medium enterprises will expire in June. So if we do not cut the RR, this effectively, unless we do something about it, which I will talk about later, we tend to tighten monetary conditions. Because right now, uh, uh, Loans to medium small scale industries qualify reserves until the end of June. So if we decide not to extend that, uh, that, that uh, policy, then uh, we, we, we must upset it by cutting reserve requirements. Okay, now. Roughly, uh, these are the preliminary numbers, that's equivalent to cutting by, if you get, if you eliminate the reserve qualification of loans to MSMEs, that's the, roughly the equivalent of cutting by 200. Now, what if the effects are not equivalent? We are not very worried because what we will do is increase our borrowings to offset the effects of any, uh, well, adjust our borrowing, so to, 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 to offset the effects of money supply of the two changes. So roughly the, the two changes will offset each other. But if they don't, then we will increase either our CB bills or our, the size of our term deposit facilities so that it will be largely neutral on the effect on money supply. So therefore, it will have very little effect on uh, our outlook on inflation. Uh, microphone, please. So in terms of the triple R, can you see it being um reduced by 200 uh, basis points as early as next month? Is that, or? Yes, would yes. You we don't want, we don't want the expiration of the reserve uh, qualification of MSMEs to, to expire without us upsetting it by a cut in the reserve requirement. But from now on, I think the message is the changes in the reserve requirements are operational, not monetary policy. Because from here on, uh, the policy is, is that whatever the effects are of these changes, our, the size of our borrowings from the banks will compensate or offset. So we, we, we can calculate how, uh, wait, let, let, uh, let, wait, let's, let's have this hypothetical example, which could actually happen, right? Suppose that uh, by end of June, we will let the reserve qualification, uh, the, the, uh, reserve compliance by making loans to media sports industry ends. 
And we calculate that the equivalent of that is roughly 200 basis points. Then, then in this particular case, what you have is something neutral on money supply. But of course, uh, it, it will be pure coincidence that they are exactly the same, right? Just upsetting each other. In which case, we will just adjust the size of our borrowing. As you know, when we borrow from the banks, that's effectively, when we borrow more from the banks, that's effectively reducing money supply. And we lend more to the banks, that is, or we borrow less from the banks, that's effectively uh, increasing money supply. So my point is from now on, all the, all the changes in the reserve requirements are all operation uh, not monetary policy because we will use our facility uh, the size of a facility we will adjust the size of our facilities to make sure that such changes in reserve requirement policy have no effect on money supply thank you governor any other questions from the floor by the way the best time to do it of course is is june 30 because uh, we we think that the, the allowing the loans to uh, medium small scale industry was really a measure for the as a response to the pandemic, and now that uh, I think the economy is uh, now normally open, then it's a good time to to let the relief measure expire. Thank you, Gold. Next question, please. Good afternoon. This is Keisha from Business World. Um, a little bit of forward guidance, Governor. How long do you plan to keep the policy rate at 6.25%? Is another rate hike possible this year, or do you see cutting the policy rate by this year or next year? It will depend on uh, what happens to inflation, but the and what happens to, like it or not, what happens to U.S policy rates. So I think the more likely scenario is that the U.S. Uh, is not going to cut or might even increase. Or if they will cut, they will cut rather late in the year. So assuming that our current inflation forecast is unchanged, then the the question becomes uh, what if uh, what if they raise policy rates then clearly it's very hard for us to cut even if our view is that we're likely to achieve our uh, our uh, inflation target because uh, of course uh, it all depends as well on uh, whether we are able to convince the markets that you know the differential between our policy rate and US policy rate does not have to be 100 125 basis points right? so so you know, so all of those things will be taken into consideration so what that means though is if you put all of that together it's quite unlikely that uh, we will cut in the next or even the next to the next uh, policy meeting. Okay, if, uh, if for instance, the, the likely scenario is the US is going to cut in September or October, clearly uh, we will not be too far ahead of that. Of course, the assumption there is that the current inflation forecasts are, are not revised upwards. Thank you, Governor. Any other questions? Hi, good afternoon, Dr. Officials. Um, in your statement and in the report, there's a, you continue to open the door to further rate hikes. So what conditions uh, must be present for you to resume your monetary tightening? Well, if it turns out that our, our forecast to be revised upwards, 
Okay, so there is a new shock or inflationary expectations are much higher. Uh, so so it, it's threats to our inflation, it's it threats to our ability to achieve uh, it, uh, the two to four percent targets. Now, if you look at it, uh, Initially, we were expecting, in a previous meeting, we were expecting yeah, that the headline inflation will be below 4% by October. As you can see, the, we brought down our forecast and we're now thinking we will hit it by, by, by September. So if, if the current uh, forecast is maintained, we are unlikely to cut but at the same time, as I already said, we are also reluctant. So unlikely to cut, but also reluctant. No, unlikely to raise, but also reluctant to cut. Because the, the problem is if the US is raising policy rates and we are cutting, the market seems to see that as a trigger for a significantly weaker peso. For some reason, the market seems to think that the policy rate uh, differential of 100 to 125 basis points is uh, what's, uh, what will lead to a more stable peso. Or more or less, the, not making the dollar too strong relative to the peso. Thank you, Governor. We have so, so in short, in short, the more, the more likely scenario is neither a cut nor a an increase. Neither a cut in the next two, what, uh, two or three uh, policy meetings. Okay. So a pause. Huh? So a pause. It's a, so it's a pause for <laughs> two or three policy meetings. Okay, so that's the more likely scenario. As if you can, uh, if you uh, let me read the uh, let me read the way we said it. Uh, uh, somebody point now. Let us know about when I the statement. Not in your. I think uh, yeah, the last. But 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 you know you know implication. Eh? Okay, given this consideration. The monetary board deems it prudent for the BSP to take a pause in monetary policy tightening while remaining ready to respond to emerging threats to inflation. So clearly, uh, the the pause is the more or less the um, a pause is more likely than a, a, because precisely we re, we revised the inflation forecast downward. So a, a, a hike is not called for, but but at the same time, we are quite concerned that uh, uh, we have to, uh, we, we, because we're still uh, not that ready to cut because of all of the things that I have described. Thank you, Governor. We will now proceed to questions that have been sent to us by market analysts and reporters online. So first question from Michael Ricafort of RCBC. How much would be the effect of the El Nino drought on headline inflation from the fourth quarter of 2023 to the first quarter of 2024? Well, our, our, our forecast is about uh, 0.1%, but I think uh, France is in a better position to answer the question. Thank you, Governor. So I'll just uh, clarify the basis for our uh, uh, assessment. And that is keyed into the latest uh, climate advisory of Agasa, where a weak to moderate El Nino episode is expected to emerge by uh, June, July, and August, and likely persist until the first quarter of uh, next year. Now, um, what we've done is um, the baseline uh, 
forecast that was uh, earlier uh, announced by Dennis does not yet take into uh, account the, uh, the 10 basis point possible impact of uh, El Nino, but rather the potential effect of El Nino is uh, included in the uh, risk matrix that we have that's in the fine chart. And it's an outside risk to the inflation outlook. And the main channels of impact would be uh, through I uh, bought uh, possible uh, higher car crop prices and electricity rates. Now, as to the um, estimate of the impact, uh, we based it on past episodes of the uh, El Nino. But having said that, um, there are uh, uh, um, uh, proactive interventions. The government is already aware of the need for this, and uh, 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 the interventions have been uh, identified including the activation of the interagency El Nino Task Force led by the Department of Agriculture, promotion of appropriate water management, development and rehabilitation of water systems, including irrigation canals and diversion dams, conduct of um, cloud seeding operations, and the use of drought resistant crop varieties and adjustment of the planting calendar. And all of these uh, interventions will help to mitigate the impact of uh, El Nino. Thank you. By the way, regarding the previous question, uh, I think this is the best sentence that captures our, what's likely to happen. The monetary board also deems it necessary to keep the policy rate at its current level over the near term. Of course, over the near term is what? Not just one meeting, right? That's very near term, no? Now, uh, okay. two meetings, and uh, near term na yun, no? Three meetings, baka near term. No? Six months, hindi na near term yun, no? So, uh, eight months, no? So, yun ang, yun ang, yun ang language na I'm trying to recall uh, when we were talking, when the monetary board members are discussing. Kasi hindi lang naman kami nag-decide kung na, na ipos eh. The decisions also uh, how long to pause. Okay, so so the best way the, uh, to, to describe the assessment of the monetary board of how long the pause is, again, let me repeat, the monetary board also deems it necessary to keep the policy rate at its current level over the near term. Of course, the over the near term is what gives us some wiggle room. But clearly, uh, next meeting is uh, nearer than the near term. No? So, so not clearly not the next. Uh, really, it, it, will, it, it will go beyond the next meeting at the very least. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, DG Dakila, for the next question. This is from Emmanuel Lopez of the Colegio de San Juan de Letran. He asks, in the event that the monetary board will pause, which is uh, what happened, don't you think it might tilt the balance again and induce consumer spending or revenge spending leading to higher inflation than the previous? Well, to begin with, the government uh, has already taken a lot of measures to uh, make sure that non-monetary policy helps reduce inflation. In fact, you could see that from the fact that uh, the price index uh, in April, is actually lower than the price index in January. In the second place, the we are just beginning to see the 425 basis points hike. It's because we, we started from 200, now it's 625. It's beginning to work through the system. 
And in fact, as already stated, uh, the demand uh, is, is uh, still strong, but not as strong as it used to be. So, uh, so that is not, uh, we don't think that, uh, that, that a pause would, would result in uh, excessive growth of demand. We, well, again, uh, Francis, you can supplement this. We, we look at the gap between uh, demand and supply, which is largely the difference between actual GDP and what we call potential GDP. Uh, demand is slightly higher than supply. In other words, actual GDP growth is, uh, is, uh, is slightly higher than the growth rate of supply, but not by much. Right, Francis? Yes, Governor. Actually, uh, we uh, are using several uh, approaches to estimate the potential growth of the economy. Um, and um, uh, the uh, so-called output gap uh, that was already also included in the presentation of uh, Dennis earlier. Uh, that is uh, how uh, total uh, demand compares to uh, the potential of the economy is estimated to be uh, steady and uh, of uh, 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 it would be less than one percentage point over uh, the uh, policy horizon. And it may actually be uh, uh, moderating in the near term. So uh, demand would not really be a, a major uh, source or a risk to the, uh, to the inflation outlook. Uh, there are spillovers coming over from the supply side to uh, many uh, cate uh, uh, categories of um, the uh, consumer basket, but I would say that these are not, uh, this cannot yet be uh, characterized as being demand driven. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, DG Dakila. For our next question, this is from Eileen Mencias of Abante Billionario. How do you feel about the 0 0.1 percentage point decline in core inflation in April? Is it fast enough to bring down inflation back to the targeted levels by the end of the year? And we acknowledge similar questions sent by Ms. Christine Ulang of FMIC and Raisa Rasid of JP Morgan. Okay, by its very nature, year-on-year uh, -year numbers are slow to decline. Moreover, since uh, uh, some of the increase in core inflation was the reaction to the headline inflation, uh, it will also take time before the fall in the headline inflation gets reflected in the core inflation. However, if one takes a look solely at month on month, it seems that uh, even if assuming, assuming that uh, the headline inflation is falling the way we forecast it, the core inflation will eventually follow with a lag. So that, uh, so by the same reason that the, the high headline inflation pushed the, the, the rising headline inflation push the core inflation up. We will, we, might, we will actually like you to see the opposite effect and the, the similar effect that in the other direction. If we are correct that inflation, if our forecast is correct, that inflation will be four by below four by, by September, right? By, by September. Then, uh, this will also eventually get reflected as a fall in core inflation because some of the core inflation are really second 
order effects of the, the, the end line. Thank you, Governor. That's the last of our questions from our online attendees. Are there any other questions from the floor? Yes, yes. Um, the first quarter growth and succeeding growth uh, forecast in the upcoming months seem to have weighed also in your decision today. Have you determined how much more uh, hikes the economy can handle so that it can still reach the, the government target of 67%? Well, the way it looks, the, the current... Uh, the most likely monetary policy scenario is consistent with the government's growth target. And uh, by the way, the lower growth is not just because the policy rate is higher, it's also because the base is higher. Okay, let me give you an example. I was told that uh, restaurants and accommodation and hotel grew by over 20% last year. Clearly, it's hard to repeat that. Okay, so, 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 so in other words, now that the base is higher, especially in those sectors, that uh, were this person said, uh, service sector grew by 8%. That's hard to repeat. So that, uh, so in other words, when, when the bounce back that comes from the normalization, then from COVID becoming treated as a, no longer as a pandemic and no longer a health emergency, when the effect of that gets incorporated in the, pre the size of the previous period's GDP, then you will naturally have a lower growth rate. But uh, the forecast of the Kila, Francis, 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 the uh, Francis, which I agree with, is that uh, we still were in a position to grow by the numbers that are consistent with the DBCC numbers. Now, of course, by the same token, you can say, well, the, the base is even greater next year, right? Because the, you're now looking at a, an economy that is 14% higher. Wouldn't 2024 be a, a lower, have a lower growth rate precisely because of that? And uh, when you look at some of the forecast of other uh, multilateral agencies like a I think ADB and the IMF. That's precisely their forecast that uh, the next year will, the growth next year will be lower. Thank you, Governor. Uh, this is a clarification that we would like to make uh, uh, from one of our viewers on Facebook. Can the governor clarify what he meant by increased borrowing in relation to the BSP's monetary policy operations? Increased what? Increased borrowing. Okay, the gov the the money the the BSP borrows from the banks, and uh, those facilities there are two types of facilities. One facility is the bank decides how much. That's called the uh, overnight deposit facility. The other facilities, this, the BSP decides how much. Okay, that will be the seven-day term deposit facility, uh, the 14-day uh, deposit facility, and the 28-day TV, CV bill. So if we increase how much we borrow there, we're effectively reducing money supply. The money we already released, we're taking back. By the way, by the same token, when we, we sell for an exchange, we are, unless we, unless we counter it, the changes in our, in the size of our facilities, when we buy for an exchange, we're increasing money supply. 
and we sell with the goods. Okay, so this is the reason these facilities are very important to us. To make sure that when we buy or sell foreign exchange, we, we have the ability to sterilize or neutralize such effects. Similarly, when we decide to let uh, the, the relief of allowing compliance with reserve requirements via loans to you know, small scale industries, we can offset that effect of that by increase, uh, re reducing the reserve requirement. Thank you, Dr. Or, or, or by, uh, if, if that's, if, if you do not have exact match between the reserve compliance and the cutter reserve requirements, then adjustments, further adjustments in the size of those facilities allows us to have better control of money supply. Yeah. Uh, Governor, just to clarify also the uh, concern of the uh, possible concern of the uh, the person who posted on the Facebook account. Uh, the, these borrowings are part of the BSP's monetary operations meant to um, manage the amount of uh, money circulating mm -hmm. in the economy and in so doing to achieve the inflation target. Yeah. So they're not, they, they do not uh, have any implications on our uh, uh, Philippine debt or national government yeah. debt. The the uh, the entire idea is that uh, the 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 VSPS tools to manage not just the interest rate directly by uh, policy rate changes, but also the supply of money. Governor, just to quickly add also that uh, maybe just to further clarify that when the, the central bank borrows from the banks, it's we return the money right away, either overnight or after seven days or after 14 days or after 28 days. And the idea, uh, we, we don't actually spend the money. We, the yeah. idea of a borrowing is just to set the help set the price, uh, market price of money, which is the interest rate. Yeah. By the way, precisely because of that, our long-term plan is that we will no longer ration the reverse repo. Because uh, right now, because our reverse repo is limited by uh, three, to 305 billion pesos, because in the old days, that was all the securities that we had. We actually, uh, when the offers exceed 305, we proportionately ration it depending on the, your, the share of the winning bidder in the total, uh, total bids. Okay, so, uh, so, so in future, we, we will actually increase the auctions so that we don't have to ration it. Okay, so this, this, these tools are, are tools to not just determine the uh, overnight rate, but also uh, to determine as rates, possible market rates for slightly longer uh, tenors. Okay. And we may even go as uh, long as uh, uh, 56 days. Of course, you wonder why is uh, 28 and 56. The, the answer is we want something divisible by seven, you know, so that the, the auctions are always falling on the same, the same day with, with regularity. Okay, so these are all tools of central banks. The central banks not just try to manage the market rates by deciding overnight rates, but if they also try to influence market rates by managing money supply. Okay, the general rule is, uh, okay, this the accounting is very simple. 
money is our liability. So, but we can replace it with a liability that's not money. Right? So when you look at the balance sheet of, of the central bank, assets equals liabilities plus equity. Okay, so we have a choice whether a liability will be money or non-monetary. And this is what allows us to have better, better control of money supply. Now, in the past, we had less control because we just had, all we had was a maximum of 305 billion of reverse repo. And then we did not have the PDF and the uh, CV bills. So effectively, the banks decide what the money supply is, right? If they decide to deposit more with us, they reduce money supply. If they, divorce, if they decide to withdraw their deposits, they increase money supply. So all we had control over was, of course, the official policy rate. Now, with all these tools we have now, our, our, our tools for manage, uh, our tools for achieving our liquidity, our, in, our inflation targets, and also in the long run, stability targets are better now. Now, this together with the the interest rate corridor. Okay, because one, one, one is the rate at which we borrow, at the lowest one is the rate at which we borrow by our deposit facility, and the highest one is the rate at which we lend. And at the midpoint is the, is the, uh, is the policy rate. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, DJ Lakila, and thank you, OIC Lapid, for a follow-up question. Uh, this is from Eileen Mencias of Avante Billionario. She said, the PSA has noted an increase in rice inflation beginning February. Latest data on rice stocks show a decline. How do you see this affecting inflation given that rice accounts for a sizable chunk in food inflation? Thank you, Governor. Actually, we're looking at uh, developments in rice on a more um, uh, a higher uh, frequency basis. And if we look at the uh, developments in the weekly update that we provide to the monetary board, uh, as uh, uh, Eileen has noted, well, on the monthly basis, uh, there is indeed an increase in the nationwide uh, average uh, retail price of um, bought well milled rice and uh, regular milled rice. Um, that is uh, for the month of April. However, when we look at it on um, uh, uh, the this is uh, comparing the first uh, the second phase of the April survey to the results in the first phase conducted in the first half of the month. We already see a decline in well milled rice prices in areas outside the NCR, and uh, this outweigh the increase uh, in NCR prices. Uh, again, uh, retail prices of regular milled rice were also slightly down uh, for both the NCR and areas outside the NCR. So uh, the, um, the increase in rice prices have reflected the uptrend in farm gate prices. Um, but um, nonetheless, uh, we uh, see the harvest of the dry season crop being underway. And that will lend uh, support to the stability of domestic rice supply continued with, um, together with continued arrival of rice imports. And this should help to 
uh, stabilize the price of rice, and that is something that we've already uh, uh, seen some indications of in the latest uh, rice uh, surveys. Thank you. Thank you, DG. At this point, I'd like to know if there are any more questions from the floor. If there are no more questions, we would like to thank everyone for their time and attention this afternoon. Also, we would like to remind you that the monetary policy report will be available on the BSP website tomorrow, May 19th, Friday. This ends our monetary policy stance press briefing. Maraming salamat po. Thank you.